duty of care and duty of candor is morally, ethically, and a legal obligation to act in the best interests of individuals and others. This is based upon common sense, such as compassion, caring, respect, dignity, and advocating of people's rights. But those who require a better understanding of our professional roles versus duty of care and a duty of candor, it is about acting as any other reasonable person in a responsible way towards others to keep them safe from immediate significant danger and protect from being put at risk of significant harm. The difference between duty of care and duty of candor is that the duty of care is the obligation to act in the best interests of the individual and duty of candor is a statutory legal duty to be open and honest with service users or their families when something goes wrong that appears to have caused or could lead to significant harm in the future. A crucial part of the duty of candor is the apology. Apologizing is not an admission of liability. This is the case regardless of whether you are in the health or social care or public or private. Saying sorry always is the right thing to do. It's not an admission of liability. It acknowledges that something could have gone better. The first step to learning from what happened and preventing it from reoccurring. You have a duty of care and candor to the people you support, your colleagues, your employer, yourself, and the general public and society being open and transparent regardless. Always act in the best interests of individuals and others. Treat service users with dignity, respect, quality of experience, fulfillment, and work towards the values of social care. What I'm about to say is not complex. These are common mistakes which have no place in social care and contravenes your duty of care and duty of candor. Leaving a service user alone in the home when they should be supported or supervised or failing to monitor or supervise service users resulting in accidents and injuries or neglect and failing to report or disclose incidents or events. Forgetting to administer medication or failing to follow correct medication procedures or not ordering medication resulting in the service user without his or her medication and not reporting this. Using service users' finances for personal financial gain without the service user's knowledge, permission or their understanding or failing to record appropriate financial transactions to evidence income and expenditure. Not accessing health services on behalf of the service users or failing to monitor injuries that may require action for further medical attention. Not reporting or recording accidents and incidents or failing to seek medical attention as and when required such as health emergencies and general health checkups. Not following risk assessments, care plans, health action plans, PBS, but doing your own thing because you think you know best. 
failing to provide personal care or social activities without good reason. Perpetrate degrading or harmful treatment as this is abuse. Prevent a client with full capacity from making a decision that you and or other professionals or their family consider to be foolish. Locking a client in their room to prevent them from entering or leaving as this is classed as an illegal restraint or even imprisonment. Ignoring service users or a concern raised. Engage in or condone poor or illegal practice. Fail to put people's health and safety first or report and record an incident. Not carrying out your daily health and safety checks. This includes fire safety. Assume someone else will take responsibility to report an incident. This does not let you off the hook and will not be a valid excuse. Or cover up the occurrence of an incident or destroy records or evidence. Engage in an activity which is not permitted within policies. I promise you, if you are engaging in any of the above activities, trust me, you are failing in your duty of care and duty of candor. You do not belong in the social care industry because you are placing vulnerable children and adults at risk. Now let's take a positive approach of duty of care and a duty of candor. Sit up, take a deep breath, smile and repeat the following. To continue watching this training video, sign up now at www.senllc.co.uk. Learners will benefit from a range of specialist courses. Subject fields like health and social care, personal development, customer care, business, marketing, finance, and many, many more. Our SEN courses have been developed through years of research via psychology and professional inputs, targeting cognitive learning and an active five senses hit in learning new skills and information retention. Incorporating the five senses of learning, touch, sight, hearing, smell and taste. Users will be invited to complete a question and answers exercise and will attend a competence-based interview by an independent assessor before certification. Once you have passed your questionnaire and interview with your assessor, SEN will issue you a one-year competency-based certificate. The new way of learning is SEN LLC. Sign up now at www.senllc.co.uk